Our whole goal right now is to try and get to Basasta, India, so we can do some diving. Lots of sharks, huh? Like 30 sharks following us the whole time. <laughs> Previously on Delos. Bye bye Madagascar. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what is going on, but something happened with the bit Genoa. Genoa connects to the furler. Okay. It came off or it chafed through or something. So I'm gonna have to go up there and take a look. So I've just finished my my watch I guess and the sun is shining and we're sailing so it's really good. We finally got some wind, it's been really calm for quite a few days now and we've been working quite a lot and last night was a bit intense and Brian had to go off the mast and it wasn't very nice but it's fixed so it's all good and today it's sunny and it's really nice. I wanted to talk a little bit about what I like the most about passages and when I thought about it it's kind of the feeling of almost hibernation that I think that I enjoy the most. You have the time to relax, to just sit, you have the time to read books, you don't have to feel guilty about it, you don't have to feel weird about it, it's okay to just lay and do nothing. I guess what I kind of struggle with the most or that I think is the most challenging is when it's quite rough and the constant movement of the boat. Like not all passages are very bad and hopefully we just have a few days of it. But you live with it and you find your spots. Are you feeling very real? Pretty good. But I was in front of the computer and uh, started to feel a little bit squishy so I came outside to read which for some reason doesn't bother me so I'm just gonna chill out here for a while drink some ice water doesn't yeah. sound too bad no it's good life come on Oli he's a tough guy Oh yeah. Go. Go 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 go. Go go. All right, man. Look at this. That's going to be good eating, man. What type is it, Brady? It's either a big eye or a bluefin. Oh. I knew it. I told you. Okay. Sushi you tonight. The, uh, get the knife. And then I'll give his little death throws. First fish, Oli. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think something else on this one. Good job. Hey, oh, man. Something else on there. Yeah, we'll put him back. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. He's going for the big lure while Mama took the small one. <laughs> I think we have to do sushi. Yeah? I think sushi is in order for dinner. Okay. So you're getting your, your wish. Yeah, it looks like. What did you say when you first got on the boat? We have to catch a tuna and we have to eat fresh sushi. Okay. So we've got our papers ready. We've got a little meat laid out. The only veggies we have is cucumber. We've got rice going on. And we'll roll them outside because I don't think the German brothers have ever done anything like this before. Okay, so you put a little bit of water on the paper and then you roll it. Uh -huh. So the trick is to have a little bit of a thingy there. Yeah. 
and then keep pressure but don't squeeze it too much. That's what she said. Da! This is mine. Is that right? Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 go on, go on, go on. Go, 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 go for it, go for it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Look! I do! Look, 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 look! Look at that, man! Look at that, man! Nice job, dude! <laughs> so it's about 4 in the morning and we're just coming up on our fourth full day at sea in a few hours. We've been in the fifth day. And uh, so far the trip has uh, been pretty good. We've had really light winds. In fact, we've got like zero wind right now. So we started motoring a few hours ago. And um, our whole goal right now is to try and get to Basasta, India so we can do some diving. And right now we're about 223 miles away from Basas. So we're gonna try and uh, time our speed so that we arrive first thing in the morning, which should be uh, at this speed about two days from now because we're, we're going just real slow just over four knots to try and save as much fuel as we can um, But uh, We'll have to see hopefully everything will line up because last time we dove there it was fantastic And I would really love to dive there again So I just woke up and it looks like on the wind charts that we will have some more endless days of motoring. <laughs> I'm gonna try and fly the drone and see if we can get like mm -hmm. a picture of Delos going up and down on the swells. It might look pretty cool. Yeah. I, I'd say the swells are like three meters. Yeah, I think probably. But really, really far apart. So like a huge period. So they're just big rolling mountains that come by with no wind. Yeah. <laughs> Later that afternoon, a miracle happened. We actually had enough wind to sail for a few hours. And it was awesome. Delos was back in her element, using the power of Mother Nature to move us closer to our destination. But just as quickly as the wind appeared, it disappeared again. What happened to the wind? The wind has disappeared, Again. as it does every afternoon. <laughs> uh, and we're trying to figure out how much we can motor. So a few days ago, me and Brady did a little test. We figured out exactly how much fuel we had with the dipstick. And then we always made sure that we motored at the same RPM, 1500, which is pretty low. And then we measured the engine hours, so we've gone, we've motored 24 hours since then, and it was 385 liters of fuel at that point. So let's see what we're at now. Now we're at 330. So that's 2.6 liters per hour. So that's not so bad. So if we have about 330 left, divided by 2.6, 2.5. That's 132 hours we can go, right? And let's say that we can always make five knots. So we still have a range of 634 miles. 
So we're in good shape. Yeah. We're, we're not going to run out like we're tomorrow. Out. Day six at sea, and it is friggin' hot. So we're going to stop the boat and go for a refreshing swim in the ocean. How deep is it here? Probably 3,000 meters. 3,000 meters. You know, Alright. Let's do it. Let's go for a swim. Okay. Stop on boat. Gross. I just saw a little Venus nizzle, yeah? No. <laughs> the fruit basket. The fruit basket. Thanks, brother. So I want to take my pants off. <laughs> You're a dick face. <laughs> <laughs> Nice those job. are my four day undies, they had two days left. Oh, those are done, bro. <laughs> They're done. So is that real? It's so refreshing and the water is so clear. I can't wait till you get to Basas. I think the viz is going to be epic. Basas to India is an atoll located right in the middle of the Mozambique Channel. 250 miles to the east you'll find Madagascar and 250 miles to the west is Mozambique and the continent of Africa. The water around here is deep about 10,000 meters, over 30,000 feet. What we're seeing is all that remains of an ancient volcano rising out of the depths. Eons upon eons of wind and weather have worn the volcanic island completely away. Now all that remains is a coral reef encircling a brilliant blue lagoon. There's no land here, which means no airport and no people. The only way to get here is by boat. Plus, it's considered a French territory and a marine reserve. So technically, any commercial fishing and tours are considered illegal. All of these things mean that Basas to India is an untouched, underwater wonderland. It's known for big sharks, big grouper, and lots of shipwrecks. And that, to a bunch of dive nuts, means we absolutely must find a way to get in the water here. Okay, so we are about 10 miles away from the reef. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see anything on radar yet. Normally you can pick up like rocks or there's some shipwrecks also, oh, okay. but I don't see anything mm -hmm. even at 16 miles out. We have no sails up at all okay. and we're still doing four knots because the wind is from behind now. So we're kind of in a, a tough situation because we're not 100% sure how far the reef is mm. and it is four in the morning so we probably have another two hours before the sun comes up. I've put a line in here that we don't want to cross before it's bright. Yeah, if we get to that line before the sun comes up we'll have to either sail north or south or we can even just turn around and motor directly into the wind. For, just keep checking radar. Hopefully we can see something pop up because there's shipwrecks that are out of the water there mm. that are on top of the reef. Yeah, mm. like wrecks that have hit the reef and mm. they're on top, so normally you can see on radar. Mm. So it's 6 a.m., just came on watch, and we're here at Basas. I can just start to make out the reef now. We're just a few miles away. Check it out. Out on the horizon is that line of breaking water. That's all that marks the reef. There's actually no land here. So the only way to spot it is by the break on the reef itself. Could you imagine being like in the old days of sailing before there was charts and GPS and radar and just coming across this thing at night and just wrecking your ship here. And that's why there's so many wrecks here because this is right on the route from 
like coming anywhere in the Indian Ocean down the Mozambique Channel around the Cape back to Europe all the ships came through here so I think I heard there's like at least 150 wrecks right on this one reef So we've made it to the spot that we wanted to get to, but it's super deep, way too deep to anchor, like right up to the reef, it's about 50, almost 60 meters. So I think our plan is to put uh, Maggie in, because I don't want to get Delos any closer to the reef. And then we'll dive off Maggie. The only snag in our plans is there's a boat out there 12 miles away. You can see it through the reflection, but they're right here. And it's kind of a gray area if you're supposed to be here or not. Like we actually have a permit from TAF, which is the area that administers like the, the French government department that administers this area. So we can visit here, but we're supposed to, I think, visit Europa Island first and pay some fees and stuff. And you're not supposed to dive here. I'm not sure exactly why. They probably say it's for safety because it's so remote or something like that. So we're gonna chill out for a bit and uh, see if these guys come any closer because it looks like sort of a weird boat. They're not on AIS. So hopefully it's not a, a French Navy or anything like that. This is sailing vessel Delos on 1-6. Come back over. Yeah, this is Lena Odindo. How may I help you? 06, please. 06. This is Russian. The ship was strange to us because they were only doing three or four knots, which is pretty slow for a 100 meter, 300 foot ship this far out to sea. Every 10 miles or so, their course would zigzag back and forth at right angles. Our best guess? They were an under-the-radar fishing operation, dragging nets and filling their freezers. Yes, good morning to you guys. Oh, we just saw you guys floating out here. We're passing by bus us to India and hadn't seen a boat in a while. So just wanted to say hello and see how you're doing and what you're doing. Very good. Okay, you're on your way to Japan. We are on our way to uh, South Africa. Uh, yeah. Okay, you as well. Have a good journey. We'll be standing by on 1 6. That was very quick. Quick and efficient. <laughs> we are on our way to Japan. On their way to Japan. Imagine how much they must have to pull in to make it worthwhile to take a 300 foot ship across two oceans and back to their market. Hi. We're gonna go say hello to the Sharkies. Oh man, have a good dive. Just say hello and let them know that you're coming next. Yeah, tell them I'm coming soon to see my babies. Have fun guys, I will be here. I'm on 6-9 Yens on VHF. Okay. The Pleasure Channel. Pleasure Channel. Yeah. Good. Right. Okay. We expected the waters to be sharky, but man, they were right under us the second we dove in. It was Shark City down here. They were mostly gray reef sharks. The larger grays were in the two meter range, with a few smaller white and black tips thrown in for variety. And they were super curious, coming right past us trying to figure out what the hell we were. But they didn't act aggressive, just curious. So me and Karen felt pretty comfortable. I do think it was a little more stressful for Uli though. Not too bad for your third dive, eh Uli?
Just a short distance from where we dropped in, we found some debris that looked to be from a shipwreck. And then a little deeper, we found it. The massive stern portion of a fairly modern shipwreck. Given its location, we are pretty sure it was the other half of the ship we saw on the reef above. How massive was this thing? So lucky to be diving such a remote spot. Like in order to get out here, you have to fly to Africa and then get a boat from Maputo. And you're not even supposed to be out here, really. But it's definitely an untouched paradise. Healthy reef, sharks. Doesn't get much better than this. Just sailing back and forth, waiting for my turn to go diving. Cloudy, it's but not crazy, but there's big grouper down there. Yeah. There's monsters and so many sharks. Lots of sharks, huh? Like 30 sharks following us the whole time. <laughs> Just <laughs> all around. Like up to only spins, you know, like nudging its spins. What do you think, Uli? How was that? I... So good, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Do you like sharks? He does now. Nah, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> Such amazing diving, like I have never ever seen that many sharks. Like we literally went in and it was like 15 of them just circling us. Like I've never experienced that before, it was so amazing and I've yeah. never been that close to as many of them as well I think. It was just really impressive, like they're such cool animals. And they just like, mm -hmm, can I eat this, can I eat this and then when they kind of realized that we weren't food and we weren't going to give them any food, they they kind of gave up and it was just a few of them, like four, that stayed with us for like the whole dive and the second dive too. But really amazing creatures and I'm so happy, you know, we get to be able to see this because it's not many places in the world that still exists. So we kind of take turns and we're diving in teams of two, so me and Brian and Uli is one team and then Brady and Jens goes as one team and the dinghy is always kind of following the people that are down so just in case something happens so they need to get picked up and then so Brian is in the dinghy now and are gonna be down there like out by the reef just by the edge waiting for them to come up and me and Uli are on Delos just kind of sailing around filling the dive tanks and making sure that Delos is all good so it's a good good team effort just for safety you know safety first all right dudes go ahead you go first you're gonna do what 30 minutes 40 minutes what are you gonna do yeah Whatever. probably 40 okay have fun okay bye bye two, two three go
hell of a day, man. Like, I'm pretty exhausted. Three dives, filling your own tanks, in and out of the dinghy. It's a lot, it's a lot of work and uh, I love it. It's been a freaking fantastic day. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad we got to dive here. And the, the weather has been perfect. It's just been incredible. So the guys have been down about 25 minutes now. So hopefully in the next 10 or 15 minutes they'll be up. Until then, my job is just to float out here and wait until they pop their little heads up. Another amazing dive, bro. Yeah? Yeah, it was like a wall. They go straight. No. Serious wall dive. Really? <laughs> Not even like a really? slope. It was just, just a straight down wall. Straight down wall. Right cool. when we got in, a big turtle. No way, really? Yeah, yeah. Some away, and then, oh man, just beautiful reef, beautiful fish. A toast to the sauce to India for a f***ing yeah, killer day. Yeah, for awesome a good day. show. Yeah, that was good just, show, the <laughs> sauce. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Yeah. But a beautiful day of diving. Yeah. Good job, dudes. You guys do killer for not being like your third dive or whatever. Yeah. New open water divers <laughs> killed it. <laughs> and now, out. We're out. Southwest, 685 miles to Durban. Up next. The front for the low pressure system is here. I'd say we have a couple more miles before we get blasted to southerly winds. We're beating probably, I guess, 20 knots of wind southeast. And uh, it's a bit rough. South Africa! Holy, what did you tell anybody? <laughs> We're back. Okay, sweet. First thing in the morning. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> Country music and diving, that's what life's all about. <laughs> <laughs>